We want to continue our coverage now on medical malpractice laws across the country. Right now, caps on damages in some states severely limit which victims of medical malpractice make it to the courtroom. I sat down with three people recently who have very different stories of loss and heartache to tell, but who share a common goal for justice. When it comes to human life, accountability is non-negotiable. The justice system exists uh, for everyone. You rely on these doctors with your life. Sabrina Davis from Florida, Richard Waldher from Wisconsin, and Michael Whittier from Maine have one thing in common. All claim they have been impacted by medical malpractice. You feel as though you have been denied some measure of justice. Is Absolutely. that where you are? Yes. How frustrating is that at this point? Extremely painful. Sabrina lost her father, Keith, Richard, his daughter, Tracy, and Michael is fighting late stage cancer. The three of them are facing different battles in different states to change the laws, making it difficult for them to access the courtroom. I'm up against deep pockets. They don't want this law to change. It was just two years ago that Sabrina's life changed forever when she dropped her father off at the ER after he complained of knee pain. And we trusted them and we educated this resident on my father's history of blood clots and that he's taking a blood thinner. Despite his medical history, Keith Davis was moved to rehab without receiving an ultrasound to check for blood clots. My dad and I talked and 19 minutes after we spoke, he had no pulse and he was not breathing. I contacted his primary doctor and I said, what happened? My dad was there for knee pain and he's dead. I don't understand. Suspicious of the circumstances surrounding her father's death, Sabrina immediately paid to have a private autopsy done. They pulled out a nine inch long blood clot from my father's chest, 100% preventable. Armed with the autopsy report, Sabrina began looking for an attorney to take her case. I called and called several lawyers. But was shocked to learn she didn't really have one because her father was retired, unmarried, and had no dependents. How difficult was that news for you? I didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Florida law prevents the families of unmarried adults with no dependents from recovering non-economic damages like loss of companionship in wrongful death cases involving medical negligence. This loophole is referred to by its opponents as Florida's free kill law. Earlier this year, two bills were introduced to the Florida State Legislature to overturn the law. Sabrina lobbied hard to get them passed. I have met with so many senators and House reps, Democrats and Republicans. One of the state senators Sabrina met was Senator Danny Burgess. He made me feel like he cared, but after that, he never let the bill be heard. Senator Burgess did not pass the bills out of committee, effectively killing both bills. We wanted to ask him why, and if money he received from the insurance industry, hospital groups, and doctors had any effect on his decision. But he declined our request for an interview. And what would you say to him if you had the chance? Why? Why did you make me feel like you cared? In Wisconsin, Richard Waldher is waging a similar battle. Tell me about what happened to Tracy. Tracy was um, the love of my life. She was my little girl. She needed to have foot surgery. After the surgery, I met with a doctor, and he, uh, he said that uh, there was no surprises. We thought everything was good. Tracy was released from the hospital, and the next day, Richard went to visit his daughter. It would be the last time he would see her alive. That day, April 13th, 4.30, the day I'll never forget, I get a call from uh, Tracy's mom that Tracy fell off her knee scooter. She's turning blue and stopped breathing. Uh, I don't know how I got to the hospital. I saw the heart monitor was just flatlined. I dropped to my knees in tears and I was just, I was uh, asking God to give me strength. Tracy was pronounced dead at the age of 41. The coroner determined that Tracy had died of hypertensive cardiovascular disease, despite having no history of high blood pressure. She had no cardiac abnormalities or risk factors. Richard paid to have two private forensic pathologists review the autopsy, and eventually he sought out the advice of an attorney, but like Sabrina, was shocked by what he learned. What do they tell you? That if you have a son or daughter who's single and they turn 18, I have no legal standing in Wisconsin as a parent. I said, you have to be kidding me. We couldn't pursue a case. 
uh, without the power of uh, subpoenaing uh, documents, compelling testimony, you're standing outside the courthouse and you're, you can't go in. No other occupation that I'm aware of has such an iron curtain of protection around them. These families need justice. I mean, they not only need justice, but they need answers. Representative Christine Sinicki of South Milwaukee has championed patient safety in the state of Wisconsin. Our laws here in Wisconsin, as Attorney Thompson said, are draconian. This year, she introduced several pieces of legislation geared to improve patient safety. Well, I've introduced three bills. But she's faced steep opposition. We are up against a very strong lobby. Take a look at campaign finance reports. Um, it's all about lobbying and it's all about money. Representative Sinicki's bills were never heard, just like the Florida bills Sabrina lobbied in support of, but she's undeterred. These laws are put in place to simply hurt people. It's just to me disgusting. They need to be changed. In Maine, Michael Whittier says he is dealing with his own legal nightmare. Tell me about your journey. I, uh, I started having some, some health issues. Concerned, Michael took himself to the doctor for an exam and got some surprising news. They, they started doing some testing and found out that I had prostate cancer. I was really confused by the fact that I had prostate cancer because this, that's the first I had heard of it. And, um, Despite the fact that you had gone in for checkups exactly, and you've been tested. Exactly, yeah. They found out that it was advanced enough that it got into my bladder and some of my lymph nodes as well. Facing mounting medical bills, Michael searched for a lawyer to take his case. Basically, they said there was nothing they could do for me. Uh, state of Maine does not have a discovery rule. In Maine, the clock starts ticking on the statute of limitations the moment alleged malpractice takes place, regardless of when it's discovered by the victim. Meaning that in the event of a cancer diagnosis, the clock might run out for a legal case before someone even knows they're sick. How did you react when you found that out? Well, I was, I was angry, for, for one, because it had three years to progress. And had they caught the cancer earlier, how much better of a position would you have been in? Every doctor that I've spoken to so far said it would be um, pretty much a routine surgery. I wouldn't have the side effects of the cancer progressing into my bladder and, and lymph nodes. Michael is in remission, but still haunted by the circumstances of his diagnosis. What is your prognosis? I've got um, another year of um, hormone therapy to go, which is um, it's pretty brutal. What, what part is so hard? I've got sons and I've got grandchildren and a beautiful wife and, uh, you know, just the not being told part. Sabrina, Richard and Michael are united in one other aspect, a steadfast resolve to fight for change. The loss, the pain, uh, the grief, somebody can't put in words. There's no dollar amount that'll make up for that. It's not about the money. It's not. It's about fairness. We need help. Um, we, we have a fight that we did not sign up for. Put the money aside, put the politics aside, and truly look inside, look in their heart, and think about how it could be you. It could be your child. It could be your loved one. And because this is such an important and also complicated issue, we have created a place for you to learn more about medical malpractice laws, including a way for you to find out if your doctor has a disciplinary record. You can go to newsnationnow.com to see our continuing coverage and also our team of digital reporters have provided lots of extra material that will help you better understand medical malpractice laws and how they differ state to state. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.